I love you, Bobby. Everybody has their own personal journey. I've taken every single opportunity possible to show the world your business through social media. That is the problem. You gotta get out here and get on a little bit more. It was the flex on your old girlfriends or the girls on the other side that you don't like or the girl that messing with your ex. It was that's all the shit is about. We gotta get up on all of that nigga shit. We don't be want to win. We be on too much nigga, local, neighborhood shit. But we talking about we want to go global. No. No, we can't go global playing local. We got local mindsets talking about. And some of our mindsets don't even be local. It be neighborhood shit. Yeah. One thing we got to understand is black people, everybody can go. Hello, my children. What did he say? Everybody can't go. And I think the sooner that we realize that everybody can't go with us, the sooner or the quicker we'll be able to go to whatever that next level is. Um, so often we get caught up on so many different things that we or like who's with us along our journey that we forget to be present during the journey, that we forget to put in the work ethic that is required during the journey. We get so entitled during the journey. Um, and we often forget that everybody can't go. So welcome to a Trophy's Guy. I am honored to have you all here. My name is True. I am your host tonight. And this is our live Q&A. Some of you may have been here before. A lot of you may have been with, here with us for the last 11 months. And you'll know that I might have spoiled you because usually when we do our live Q&As, we go all night long as long as you guys are asking me questions. Some of you, you're new, so you don't know what to expect. Well, this is a space for entrepreneurs, individuals with ideas, business owners, or anybody who's looking to scale. My name is True, and I am a personal strategist. What I do is work with individuals and businesses to help them scale their ideas to from one level to the next. So... What you guys just seen was a recap of something called Wellness Weekend, right? Again, welcome, 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 welcome. But Wellness Weekend was so fire. If you missed that, I'm sorry for you. We are going to have some replays. I'll talk about that a little bit later on how you can access those. But be looking out for Wellness Weekend. July of 2023 is going to be amazing. Shout out to everybody who assisted with Wellness Weekend, who was a part of the event. We greatly appreciate you. Shout out to all of our vendors. Like, y'all made it possible. Each and every last one of y'all, from Inmate to Inspirations, Sisters of Charity, Burton Bell Car, Million Dollar Mission, Chef DB, United Healthcare. Thank you to Ms. Kim Foreman, Executive Director of Environmental Health Watch, who sponsored for some youth to be in the room. So if you were a part of the event, you've seen that we had youth there. We had some youth that shared their poems with Wallow um, or who were just rocking out with us throughout the entire weekend. Shout out to Kim for allowing them or creating Space for them to be in the room. Shout out to her. Um, B Thorough, the UAI, Melanated Mama, Shelly Shenanigans, who was your host, uh, or excuse me, who was y'all playing a contact? Unlock Our Minds, Kane Industries, like shout out to y'all. Greatly appreciate each and every person who was a part of Wellness Weekend and who have already signed on to be a part of, part of Wellness Weekend 2023. Like, we cannot make this happen without you. We want to have you all here. We want to share the information with you. Um, and yeah, like, let's get into it. So if you are just joining us, then you know, and most of you may have already put some of your questions in the chat, but now is the time to join. Drop your questions, whether you are watching live from Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, it does not matter. Put your questions in the chat so that we can make sure we get them answered. If you put a question in the chat and it does not get answered tonight, it will be moved on to the next show. So do not worry. We will be answering anything asked of us, right? So go ahead and make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. 
before we get into it, because I want to make sure that even if you can't stay throughout the remainder of the show, that you know where to come back and find us. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe to our email list for all updates and invites. And make sure you're joining us live every Sunday. Every Sunday at 8 p.m., you can find me right here, whether you're watching from Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or Instagram Live. Make sure you are tuned in. But this is where you can find me. This is where I will be. All right, so y'all. Go ahead. If you want to join the live chat, right? You haven't put your questions in. If you haven't put your question in the chat and you want to join live so that way we can talk and I can put you up on the screen and everybody can see you and so forth. There's a certain way you have to do it. You can't join through Facebook live or Instagram live or any of those things. I have to send you a private link. This is a private live q a we a little fancy over here right <laughs> so no if you want to join go ahead and just drop it in the chat i will make sure that i send you over a link and again if you do not join on today then we will have you on for the next episode just request the link that's all you have to do um or go ahead and send me your bio to alicia that's a-l-e-s-i-a at soulclee.org again you're going to send it to alicia at soulclee.org. Matter of fact, I'll put that on the screen for y'all. But if you are looking to join us live and answer some questions for our audience um, or even share your experience, here is where you can send your bio to and you will receive a email with the date that you uh, will actually come on and it'll include the private link for you to join. So with no further ado, who got some questions? Anybody got some questions? So I'm going to pull them up in the chat. I'm going to put them up on the screen. Excuse me, not the chat. Um, and let's see. Let's let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's let's get the shit. Let's get the shit. Let's get the shit. So boom. Put this right here. How is my work ethic? How is my work ethic? Actually, everybody should be writing it down. How is my work ethic? That's the first question for you to ask yourself. That one was actually for me. I, I created this question, y'all. How is my work ethic? If you are not improving your work ethic on the daily, as an entrepreneur, a solopreneur, or even an employee, you are setting yourself up for failure. Here's why. There's going to come a point where the motivational speeches and speaks, they're not going to do shit for you. It's going to be a day where you are not inspired at all to do absolutely anything, especially provide a service or a product to people that you do not know from a fucking can of paint. And that's just the harsh reality of it, right? And so when you don't have motivation, when you're not inspired, and when you're tired as hell and you have no money in your pockets, what is the thing that's going to keep you pushing or get you to that next level? That right there. Wait, that this, 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 this work ethic, work, wait, work ethic, work ethic. That's going to be the thing. That's going to be the thing that push you to the next level because it's going to be the thing that lets you or that day consistently reminds you that if I do not follow through, I am going to fail. If I do not follow through, that is my reputation. That is my brand. That is my business. That is my money. That is my rent. That is my gas. Your work ethic is going to be the thing that sets you apart. So make sure that you are working consistently um, to improve your work ethic, right? So I do have a course on improving your work ethic. It's only $5 and that's a shameless plug. I'll put the link somewhere up underneath this video in the comments or something or in the description or something like that. If you want it or you need some advice on it, go ahead and purchase that or get on YouTube, on Google for absolutely free and type in, how do I improve my work ethic? Because you're going to need that. So if you haven't already, ask yourself, 
how is my work ethic? And be very blunt and honest with yourself. Do not lie. If you are sleeping in, if you're missing phone calls, if you're not following through, if you are not, and, and I don't mean if you're taking a mental break from life and you got certain systems and processes set up or whatever the case may be, but I'm saying like, if you are running and conducting a business and providing services and products, and you don't have work ethic, you're gonna have an issue. So check your work ethics, right? Next question. Will affiliate marketing affect my sales on my website? Um, so this question actually came from, if you watched last episode, and if you didn't, it's perfectly fine. It's up on YouTube. It's on Facebook. It's also on Twitter. Um, you could go back and you can watch the live replays of that. But I talked about Idolicious, or Idolicious, excuse me, which was um, someone who I helped set up an affiliate marketing program through a platform called Gumroad, right? And so the question was, will the affiliate marketing, and she put that link inside of her bio on Instagram, would it? affect her sales on her website. And so the way that I wanted to explain this is that affiliate marketing is a program that helps increases your visibility. So using a platform like Gumroad is something that's going to help increase your visibility. Essentially, it's like if you have a product that you want to get in front of the 8 billion people that is in the world, you're not going to just place them on your website. Yes, they can access them, but not everyone knows that your website or your business even exists. So what is it that you're going to do to set yourself aside and put your product or your service in several different places or in front of everyone's face, right? And that thing that you're going to do is put it in different places, meaning that you're going to take that product to Walmart. You're going to take it to Target. You're going to go to pop-up shops. You're going to go and put it on Instagram. You're going to put it in a Shopify store. You're going to put it on Facebook Marketplace. You're going to put it on OfferUp. You're going to put it on um, any platform that you can think of, Amazon Marketplace, to get your product in front of or your service in front of its end consumer. Affiliate marketing is the same thing. The only difference is that instead of you going to a big body or a big name store, you're using the everyday individual or other small business or, or excuse me, forgive me for using the word small. You're using other business owners, other organizations, or your everyday consumer to put your product or service in front of other people. So in short, will it affect your sales on your website? Maybe, but it's not going to affect your sales. It's not going to affect it. When I say maybe, it's not in a negative way. So let's say five people see your product, but five people see your product on your website, but they don't make a purchase. And then I'm an affiliate of your program. So they three of those people may have seen it on my page through my affiliate link. People do business with people they know, love, and trust. So maybe they don't know, love, and trust you, right? But they know, love, and trust true. And so when they seen it on True's page, they're like, oh, well, I'm going to purchase it through this link, right? You're still going to get paid from that product because it's your product. I just received the compensation off of a finder's fee, essentially. And so with that being said, it may affect your website depending on where the end consumer has seen it, but it's not really affecting your sales depending on how you put it on there. So another thing that I want to add to that is know or understand your not only your pricing structure, but your profit margins. So that way, if you're doing an affiliate program, you're not offering your affiliate more than you can afford. So the affiliate essentially is just going to get a percentage of the sale. So if your product on your website is $12, but through your affiliate link, it's $12 as well. And let's say you're giving a dollar to uh, every time this someone purchased through the affiliate link, then you're only going to make $11 on this product every time it's sold through your affiliate link versus the $12 on your website. Now, another thing you could do is if it's 12 on your website, maybe it's 13 on your throughout your affiliate link so that way you're able to compensate for the affiliate or the fee that you're going to uh, pay your affiliate the thing i love about gumroad when it comes to your payouts and all of those things you're not trying to figure out when are they going to give me my money and when do i have to give them their money the platform itself already does that you put the website i mean you put the product in there you put the description you put the payment method you put the price of it you uh, decide how much you're going to give your affiliate and then they just share the link and gumroad actually keeps track of all of the other details so when it's time to pay out through a sale that they 
they've made, then automatically what happens is they get their payment and you get yours and everybody can cash out without any confusion. So in short, does it affect my website negatively, which is what I think you were truly asking? No, it does not. It just increases your visibility of your product or your service. So I hope that really um, assisted y'all. And if y'all have more questions about affiliate marketing, make sure that you go ahead and you drop those in the comments. Can you get, can you help me get a business loan? So I personally do not specialize in getting individuals business loans, but I will speak briefly about that. I'm going to reference for everybody to write this information down, screenshot it, go to another screen and open it up. Um, but make sure you come back. You don't want to miss too much of it. Uh, business funding recommendation will be Ms. Shante Roddy. Uh, she has a company called She Boss Talk. Um, and it, she goes live on YouTube and Facebook. Um, I believe it's every week, but you really want to type that in. Like you really want to check her out, check out her page, subscribe to her YouTube channel. She boss talks. She's con consistently posting about grants and funding as well as business loans, right? So she specialized in finding business funding for business owners, whether it's a loan, whether it's a grant, um, she specializes in that. So that's who I'm definitely going to recommend for you guys to reach out to or to at least go back and rock, watch her content. Her free content will direct you to so much free money. You literally just have to take the steps, right? You have to put in the work. You have to have your foundation set. You have to have, you know, look at what each one of these funders are requiring or asking of you. Ensure that you have those things in place. Um, and we're, I have a few questions on this list that may assist you with actually preparing for receiving a business loan. But when it comes to actually going to receive that loan, that's not what I specialize in. I will tell you this though. Make sure that you are building your business credit because having your business credit um, at a higher number or having good positive business credit is something that is going to raise your chances of receiving a business loan. Another thing is recording or documenting the sales that are coming into your company. Having a proof of payment or payment records is something else that is going to benefit you when you are applying for a business loan. Um, in addition to that, I would say if you don't have business credit or if you are in the process of build, building your business credit to ensure that you are also building your personal credit because some loans that you go for are going to want a personal guarantee, which means that what is your personal credit looking like before I give you this money? All right. You made that business look good. But what is the person behind a business actually like? Are you responsible? Are you not? So it could be a catch-22. And there are several business loans out there that exist where you never have to even tap into your personal credit. So you can have really crappy personal credit, but have really good business credit and still get success at receiving a business loan. Um, but again, that's something you want to prepare for. Now, I will tell you this. Uh, if you do not have a Duns and Bradstreet number, please go and get one because that is how you even like that's the that's how you start to biz, your, build your business credit. Also, a Nave account because Nave is one of or Dun and Bradstreet Nave like these are all um, how the credit that this is how your credit gets reported reported and that the financial institution you go to can go back and see what's their credit like their payment history and so forth um we'll tap into business credit and things like that uh throughout another episode and then i'll also go ahead and share some links in the description with you about where i learned about business credit from um there's two individuals who work i have followed to assist with building my business credit over the years and that has been meek university as well as runway billionaire um and again i will share um what has been most valuable to me inside of the description our next question next question what do I need to prepare for funding? So before I go into that question, I want to remind you guys to join us live every Sunday. 
Every Sunday we are in here live. I want you to join us, drop your questions, and make sure you are subscribing to our email list for updates and invites to all events, uh, with events like Wellness Weekend, right? Because our email list got it first. Our email list knew first. So go ahead. If you are enjoying the show, if you are enjoying, enjoying the information you are getting, like, comment, and subscribe so that you can stay updated. Um, and don't go nowhere because we have so much more more to cover. I want you guys to make sure you stay tuned. Stay tuned for our giveaway. Now, in order to receive your gift, you must be following Feed the Soul Clean and Truly on uh, Instagram, right? You have to be following us on Instagram. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, duh, duh, you have to be subscribed to our YouTube channel, right? Make sure you subscribe right here. Um, on our YouTube. If you're watching from Facebook or Twitter, just jump on YouTube and, you know, click on the link, go to Stay True, subscribe to a Troopies Guide so that we know you're in here. Our winner last week was, I believe, the name was Shantier. And I'm going to put all of her business information below in the description so you guys can check her out because she was so amazing. She's like, True, I just wanted to win, but I don't really need a tripod. So put that back in the raffle so that someone else can win. So, because today's episode is previously recorded, to win, you have to be following Feed the Soul and Truly on Instagram, and you have to be a subscriber right here on YouTube, and go ahead, when you've done all three of those things, make sure that you put in the comments right here on this video, done. Put in the comments, done. And we're going to put everybody who said that they were done, going to put you into a raffle, and one of you are going to win an amazing prize. So we have some amazing gifts too. We got about four or five gifts to choose from. Um, so make sure you are staying tuned and that you are following the, the directions so that you can win that prize. Um, so what do I need to prepare for funding is the next question. What do I need to prepare for funding? So this is going to kind of uh, be different depending on if you are a 501c3, uh, like a nonprofit business or not a nonprofit business. But I'm going to go with general. Whether you are a nonprofit or a for-profit business, you need to have your articles of incorporation. Um, I know that a lot of individuals like to start off as sole proprietors, and most of us do, especially when we don't know what you know structure we want to go with, or we haven't talked to a CPA, so we don't know what's going to be most beneficial on our taxes or not and so forth. Um, but I, I'm always saying like, take that liability off of yourself. As a um, as a sole proprietor, what ends up happening is if something goes wrong with the business or the service you're providing, then it falls back on you and not your business. If you make your article of, of incorporation, something like an LLC, that liability then goes transfer over to that company. It takes the liability off of yourself. You you also have other options. You have a nonprofit option. Um, you also have the option of an S corp or a C corp. Uh, you have several different options. And so the ideally you want to figure out which articles of incorporation should you file. The next thing is your EIN. No matter which article of incorporation you file, it's only $99 through the state. It's only $99 here in the state of Ohio. So depending on where you're watching from, check your state and go on to their website to figure out, you know, what it is that you would need. Um, and it's usually like, so for us, I believe it's ohiobusiness.gov. I will put the direct link uh, below in the description and you can click it, go directly there. You literally follow the steps. They're asking detailed information about who you are, what you do, X, Y, and Z. Um, and at the end of it, you submit this form. You make sure that you have your point of contact on there um, and they're going to send you a certificate. And it can take up to 30 days. It usually takes less than a week to receive it. Um, but make sure you file your articles of incorporation. The other thing is you want to have your EIN. That is absolutely free. Uh, no matter what state you're living in, you're going to go to irs.gov and type in EIN. And you are going to put in the information. And again, you're going to get a absolutely free EIN. Your EIN number is like your social security number. It's the social security number of your business. And so what you would like to do is um, keep that on file, keep it on record, save that paper once. You're going to get it instantaneously. 
instantly. As um, soon as you do it, you're going to get it instantly. And so you want to save that paper because if you lose it, sometimes it can be very, very difficult um, to get it. You just have to call the IRS, but they're not like, is if you're not calling at like 7 a.m. as soon as they open, you're going to have a very difficult time getting through to them. Um, so your articles of incorporation, your EIN, and then that third thing is going to be your business bank account. You want to have a business bank account. You don't want to be putting sending funds to your cash app or to your chime card or any of those things. And depending on who you are or what type of business you are, um, you're going to be required to have a business bank account. They're going to want those records, uh, especially as a nonprofit. Sometimes you look for people who, or some funders want like audited financial and so forth. But again, that's a whole nother conversation. As a 501c3, I'm, or as a nonprofit, excuse me, I'm going to take it one step further and tell you, you need a fourth thing. You either need to become a 501c3 or you need to obtain a very close relationship with a fiscal sponsor, which is someone who is a 501c3 or a nonprofit organization, a charity nonprofit organization, um, and they are able to be your fiscal agent, meaning that they are in charge of your money, of managing your money. So when a funder provides funds to you, they're going to get, if you're not a 501c3, they are going to give those funds to your fiscal sponsor and your fiscal sponsor is going to serve as that person who's responsible for not only dispersing those funds to you, but also reporting back to the funder to say what you did with those funds. And so it's important, extremely important to trust who your fiscal sponsor is for several different reasons. If you mess up or if they mess up, then that could really interfere with you ever receiving funds again um, from that specific funder. And again, you want to be on top of your reports and so forth, um, because if they give you that money as a fiscal sponsor, and you don't do what you're supposed to do with it, then that actually affects or can affect their 501c3 status. So there's so much that go into that. But just to recap, the three things you want to have as the basis is your articles of incorporation, your EIN and your business bank account in order to be prepared for receiving funding. Once you receive that business loan, they have to send that money somewhere. They're usually going to want to want, they're usually going to want proof of um, income and so forth. So your bank statements, again, that's why you need a bank account. And of course, proof of the business, that the business exists and it's not just some random name. That's where your articles of incorporation and your EIN comes in. That step further is that 501c3 status um, for our nonprofits. So I hope that really, really helped y'all uh, with that. And so I'm going to jump into our next question. How do I become a 501c3? Well, that's a great question. And before I answer that, I want to shout out Pure Hazel located in New York. She is responsible for the glow you are seeing on my skin right now in this moment. So Pure Hazel is a natural product company. Um, they service in body butter. They have things like shea butter, a shimmery body butter. She has natural hair products like shampoos and conditioners and oils. And it's amazing. And so I want to say a couple of years back, um, Pure Hazel sent me some products and it was like some shea butter, some body shimmer, um, some t-shirts, like all type of stuff. And I still have a few of those products. And one of those is the shimmer body butter butter which is what i have on my face right now and obviously it has a little sparkle i don't know if y'all see it but i see it so shout out to her go ahead and follow her on all platforms follow her on instagram check out her website check her out at purehazel.com um and thank you for sending me products all the way from new york i greatly 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 appreciate you so how do i become a 501c3 right fill out the damn application fill it out it's that simple Fill out the application. So often, like, we wrap our heads. Like, it's either that we're lazy and don't want to do it or we just don't know. So now you know, in order to become a 501c3, you just fill out an application. So let me go back and give you a little clarity. Oftentimes, people think a 501c3 means nonprofit. They also think that nonprofit means that I'm not a business and I'm supposed to do shit for free all the time, but that's neither here nor there. Those are all false allegations that the public has somehow assumed, right? So for one, a nonprofit is still a business. When you go to create a business, a nonprofit is a option that is on the list. Usually a nonprofit is what you have more of a care or a humanitarian approach to the work that you are doing. But also as a nonprofit, you can only 
charge or fee for service 10 percent of what your operating budget is so i'm not about to try to do the math in my head but if your operating budget is two hundred thousand dollars a year you can only earn 10 percent of that on fee for services so let's say you are giving out books free all year long but you also want to sell some books you can sell books but you can the money you make from those books cannot exceed 10 percent of whatever it costs for you to run your organization on a yearly basis so wanted to now that you have that information what is 501c3 501c3 is a tax status there are several tax status you have a 5014 you have i think it's 501c4 or 5014 but you have yeah 501c4 like you have so many different statuses the one that i'm familiar with is the 501c3 status and what this means is i ain't paying no damn taxes i am tax exempt that's what that means not me per se but Feed the Soul is tax exempt. So any purchases that I make related to Feed the Soul, whether that's food, whether that's a U-Haul, whether that's some products from Home Depot to repair the center, any of those things that are associated to growing Feed the Soul, I'm not paying taxes on. That's what 501c3 status means. It also gives you the benefit of anybody who donates to you or gives you something for your organization throughout the year or your business throughout the year, you are able to provide them with a slip that allows them to write that off on their taxes. So now they're able to get a credit or essentially earn money from what it is that they donated or they gifted you with. Now, how do you do that? Again, you fill out the application. So there's two 501c3 applications. One is an easy form. It, that one is under two under three hundred dollars. It's like two sixty three or something of that nature. And then the other one is actually a um, the long form, which is about six hundred dollars, and they require a little bit more information. So depending on which space you're coming from, because I'm very understanding that there's going to be some people in this room who you are coming from the space of like, I've been doing the work. I just didn't know that a, what a nonprofit was or 501c3 status was or any of these things. So you're going to be coming from a space of like, hey, you may not have your bylaws and all of those things in order to go and fill out the long form. And you may not be anticipating make, making $50,000 within the first three years or so forth. Um, so you're like, okay, let me take the work I've already been doing, apply using the easy form. And the one thing you need for the easy form is for either form is to have your board in place. Um, but with the easy form, you just need your board in place. You don't have to have your bylaws and all of those things in order just yet. Um, but you need your, your three board members, their contact information, so their address, their phone number, their email, and so forth, your information, the roles that each one of them will play. So if they're treasurer, their secretary, you need to have your board seats or your chair seats in order. Um, and then that other thing that you want to make sure that you have on there is your mission statement. Like, what is your mission? Why are you doing this? And so forth. And again, that form takes maybe five or 10 minutes to fill out when you have that information. Um, and that, that one usually is like... They say it could take like six months. I think I received my status in like two months, like two to three months. Um, but then we have that group of people who's like, I have this idea. I may have been in a few spaces, but I haven't really put in like next level type of work. But I really want to do this. I want to be a nonprofit. I've decided that I want to go 501c3 status. How do I do that? Even though you too can fill out the easy form, especially if you're not anticipating making $50,000 within the first three years, which is one of the requirements, if you know that your organization has already made over the $50,000 or you're anticipating making over the $50,000 a year for the next three years um, or for the first three years, then you won't, you won't qualify for the easy form. You have to do the long form. The long form is about $600 to uh, put in, but they also want you to attach a copy of your bio laws and your bylaws are essentially like um your principles of your business it's like the handbook of your nonprofit this is how we work things this is how we make decisions this is how we earn money this is how you know we go out into the public and talk about things like this is how everything runs um so essentially to answer your question how do I become a 501c3 you go on to the um IRS website and you fill out the application and again and that's another link that I can attach below. Um, next question. How do I make money as a nonprofit? 
There are seven ways to make money as a nonprofit. I'm not touching on all of those ways tonight, but I will touch on a few of those. Um, fee for service is definitely one of those things. So when I started Feed the Soul, one of the things that we did, we were just doing like free deliveries and things of that nature. And our first set of funding came from a grant. So being write that down, that's one set. Grants are one way to earn money as a nonprofit. But eventually I started uh, moving into fee for service. So we opened up memberships for Feed the Soul and people were able to pay for the delivery of their food. So they received free food. You were able to receive free food and free PPE and things of that nature. However, you were paying for the delivery service. So fee for service is another. Grants and fee for service. Sponsorships, of course, are another way. Um, people sponsoring you, like basically people are giving you money to um, carry out your mission or to meet your goal. However, in return, you are recognizing them for their business or their work or for the for them supporting your business. So now they can actually go out and tell people, hey, I help with this good cause doing X, Y, and Z. So your sponsorships are one way. Your grants are another way. Your fee-for-service is another way. Um, endowment is another way that you can receive funding. And endowments are when you are getting other businesses to pay for the cost of your or add to your operating budget essentially over x amount of time so usually endowments come like year after year um but that's just another form for you to make money donations of course always asking for donations or creating space for people to donate or knowing that they can donate to what it is that you are doing um or you are providing or the service or the product you are providing and why it's important and so forth. So donations, sponsorships, endowments, fee for service, and grants. I just touched on five ways that you can make money as a nonprofit. The most, most, most hands down important way to make money as a nonprofit, a nonprofit is provide a quality ass service. Provide a quality ass product. Provide something that no matter what you can't take this away you don't have to donate because they're going to pay for it because this is great that's what you need to do in order to make money as a nonprofit. yes come in with the concept of genuinely caring genuinely wanting to pour into yourself your family and your community that should never change. Really, that shouldn't change if you're a for-profit or a non-profit. If you're a person in business, you are usually someone who wanted to create a solution for another individual. And that's something you should never lose. That is going to guarantee that you make your profit. But again, having a quality service or a product, hands down, trumps anything, whether donations, grants, anything is going to be the thing that keeps people coming um, by offering quality so let's see next question pros and cons of having a brick and mortar so before i touch into that i want to thank you for joining a truby's guide live q and a we are here we are here with every sunday Every single Sunday, you are able to join us live. Make sure that you are subscribing to our email list for our updates and invites. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe on this video. And I greatly appreciate each and every last one of you. Make sure you're submitting questions. Like you can join us live by requesting a link. Um, you simply just request a link by sending your bio over to my email. Here's my email right there, Alicia S. Oakley. Org. Um, send your bio over. You can receive a link to join in live to answer some questions that the audience may have as it relates to executing um, or strategizing and meeting that next level in their business or in their idea. So again, thank you. Whether you are watching the replay, whether you are joining us live, whether you submitted a question, whether you shared, whether you comment, subscribe, like, any of those things, I thank you. So our question was pros and cons of having a brick and mortar. Yeah, so pros, I'm gonna start with that, pros, right? 
pro of having a brick and mortar is definitely visibility. Uh, people know where to find you. Like when you go on Google, you can type into Google, hey, Clubhouse Essentials, hey, Feed the Soul, hey, True Creatives, Media and Management, and you can find a physical location that people can get in their car and drive to with the pinpoints and all of those things. So that's one. Two, if you're like me, um, I started off working from home and then I started graduating to like libraries and taking meetings there and things of that nature. Um, and you don't always want to do virtual. So having a space is also very, very beneficial for those reasons because you get to provide your product or your service in a physical space that's outside of your personal space. So it provides this work-life balance in a way because it's like, I don't have to bring um, essentially outsiders into my home where I this is supposed to be my safe haven, right? So that would be another thing. Another pro would really be, again, like when I talk about visibility, not just the Google aspect, but so um, my brick and mortar was actually inside of a, or is, I'm not going to say was yet, my brick and mortar is actually inside of a shopping plaza. And inside of the shopping plaza, we have a, a BMV inside of there. So there's literally hundreds of people and foot traffic that's coming through every single day, like Monday through Saturday, well, every day is a Sunday, but Monday through Saturday. And so it's, I'm able to leverage the traffic of those other businesses for my business. Um, so that would be another pro. Um, I'm going to jump into some cons really quickly. Like for me, the cons is the fluctuate like the overhead so like any business fluctuate all businesses fluctuate all businesses have like their high periods and their low periods and so forth um however with the brick and mortar even during a low period your overhead don't change so if you have staff that payroll does not change unless you are cutting their hours which also can affect because now people may leave or you may lose employees because you can't afford to pay them what it is that they need to take care of their responsibilities um you have things like your lights and your gas that does not change like this even if the business isn't making any money those bills are still going to continue you have your rent so for example i pay nearly two thousand dollars a month for my brick and mortar, but there has been a day or months where the business has made zero dollars. And so now I've had to tap into other sets of funds and things of that nature that just um it did not it, it just did not it does not feel good. And so I'm in this space. I'm more so kind of want to use this as an opportunity to to give advice of what I've learned from having a brick and mortar is um I don't ever want to rent a brick and mortar again. Like I want to own the building. I understand it comes with its own liabilities and things of that nature. Uh, you got insurance and all of that stuff. But if I'm ever in a position to where I don't want to start provide the service or product, I can also rent out the space and now I'm a landlord and just receive the income from it. The space that I'm in now, even though we sublease to different tenants, the benefit, like the money that they're paying essentially just goes to the rent that I have to pay someone else and so um if you are a person who are set who set out with the idea of ownership then i would highly highly recommend to just stay down till you come up um for me I did this to be able to uh, visibility for leverage for the the people who were around me for a washing machine and different reasons. You get what I'm saying? However, what I've learned from it is that if my end goal is ownership, that's nearly we're what approaching two years, September 8th. Well, no, March. We just hit two years. No, March, we hit a year next march will be at two years um and so within that two years that's what nearly forty thousand dollars that could have been saved for going towards owning a building instead of um paying somebody's rent so pros and cons of having a brick and mortar is going to be very very different for each individual I always recommend owning the building um, or being in partnership. If you're going to do like if you're going to be in a brick and mortar and you're going to rent from someone, then they should understand the value of your business, especially if you're a nonprofit. So there should be someone that could assist you in moving in the correct direction. For example, we have um, like every every town or city has a CDC. And so a lot 
CDCs own buildings. And so if you could be, put yourself in a space to rent from your CDC, that is a beneficial partnership. Even though, no, you're not going to get that money back later, you're going to be able to leverage that relationship so much that is going to be beneficial to everybody involved and not just yourself. Um, so having a brick and mortar is great, but essentially I think it's really just for visibility and to add some balance um, and to not have like people in your home type thing. So I hope y'all are enjoying these questions. If you are not enjoying these questions, let me know, like, put a thumbs down. Let me know in the comment how we can improve, how we can do better, um, any of those things. I'm always open to constructive criticism forever. Just like I'm forever essential. I'm forever accepting criticism, right? Long as it's constructive, save your bullshit for somebody else because I don't want it. Um, but make sure, again, y'all are staying tuned. Thank you for tuning in to a True Beast Guide Live Q&A. We are almost done. We are down to our last question. We are down to our last question. But before we go into that last question, there's two things I want to do. One, I want you to write this down. Attitude plus effort equals progress. I put this up on the screen last week and I'm putting it up again because this is our theme for this month. Attitude plus effort equals progress. And as I told y'all before, I translate that as work over time equals progress. If I want to get somewhere, my attitude and the amount of work that I put into it is going to be essential for getting progress or seeing progress, right? The other thing I want to, uh, what's that? What's that? We got to do our affirmations. So I'm not going for a color. Well, obviously, I'm going for a color, pink or blue. I don't know what color I'm going for. I'm just going to reach up, down, round, and round. Mm, we go up, down, and round, and round. All right, this is the one. I'm, I'm done. This is the one. Ah, let me tell y'all. Okay, so so this was meant. This was really the message for today. And I'm going to tell y'all how meant this was. This entire broadcast, um, as you guys seen before, I am uh, recording it the day before, and you can follow my Instagram to figure out why I'm recording it live today and going to post it tomorrow and all of those things. Um, but I did this earlier, and I forgot to press record. Rookie ass mistake, I know, like extremely rookie mistake. I've been doing this for extremely too long to have not pressed record, but when I started off earlier and I did this, this is the exact same sticky note that I picked. So that means that this message is for you. If you are still watching this at this point, if you tuned in, if you skipped over to this part, this is your message. This is why you were called here today to watch what it is that I am saying. And I know this. I fully know this because y'all just watched me blindly select this sticky note and this is the same sticky note at the beginning of the show that was sticking right here on the wall and it says your brand won't grow overnight small steps this is extremely essential whether you are a for-profit business a non-profit business any of those things it's all about branding yourself if you do not have a brand you do not have anything if people cannot recognize you when you walk into a room or recognize your business name or your name or any of those things before you walk into the room or once you walk into the room then you do not have a brand right and so and don't get me wrong, there's going to be many rooms that you step into and they don't know your brand. But if you've branded yourself, then when you walk in there, they're going to recognize that that's just not anybody. They have a brand, whether it's from your T-shirt, whether it's from the links, whether it's from your elevator pitch, whether it's from the pins, your logos, like whatever it is, they're going to know that. But I want you to remember that that doesn't happen overnight. Coca-Cola, Amazon, like Jeff did not just wake up one day and walked into a space and they're like, that's Jeff Bezos. Like he did Amazon. Like that's Amazon. And they do X, Y, and Z. That's not how that happened, right? Small steps. And if I'm not mistaken, they started in a um started in a garage, right? And so what you have to remember is to work ethic. Improve your work ethic, be patient with yourself, and make sure that you are taking the small steps that are necessary to reach a goal. Because so often, like, we forget to 
even apply the things we learned on our journey. We learn a new skill. We learn how to market ourselves. We learn how to do a sales pitch. We learn how to do a click funnel. We learn how to create a payment processor. We learn how to get business funding. We learn how to create a 501c3. But then we never take the time to apply those things or take the small steps so that we can actually get there. And so I'm encouraging you. I'm encouraging each and every last one of you to make sure sure that you are applying yourself and that you are taking the small steps necessary to reach your goal. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already to stay updated on all things a Truby's guide. Subscribe to our email list or step, stay, or to stay updated on invites and make sure that you are joining us live every Sunday. If you just watched this episode, this episode is previously recorded um, live from my bedroom, right? Uh, but every Sunday we are here to ask live questions or to answer your live questions. So please don't hesitate. Even if you're watching a replay, even if you watched the episode from last week, comment and let me know. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your questions. Let me know what questions you have in business. Last week, we had Christian Farmer who joined us, which I also highlighted her book a few times today, Million Dollar Mission. Um, she had, she joined us and she talked about proposals. She talked about being able to manifest the things you want. She talked about, you know, manifest investing your money to you, trusting that and believing that it's already yours, but also recognizing that it's truly levels to receiving the things that we want, not just in life, but in our business. And so that brings me to the question of, have you set goal impossible? I asked it last week, but I'm asking it again. Have you set goal impossible? If you're watching the replay, if you're watching it live, if you're watching it from Twitter, from Facebook, from Instagram, I need you to truly ask yourself, actually, let me know. Like, I'm done with that. I'm calling y'all out nowadays. Like, I want, and if I don't get an answer, we're going to have some problems. Like, I really want to know, have you set go impossible or are you still playing small? I said, take small steps, not play small. Like, why are you still, yes, don't get me wrong. Before you make 50,000, you need to make 10. Before you make 10, you need to make five. And before you make five, you need to make 500. Those are all true. It's truly levels to it. But have you even set the goal to make 500? Have you even set the goal to make 5,000? Have you even set the goal to make 5 million? Like, have you even set this as a goal? Like that thing that is in the back of your head or it's not even in the back of your head. It's at the front of your head and you keep pushing it to the back. Have you set that goal? It's not impossible. But because you think it's impossible, we're calling it goal impossible. Have you set goal impossible? Have you? That's the real question, Trubies. Because if we're not, if you're out here just moving with the bare minimum um, and not setting goal impossible, then you're just going to keep playing small. You're just going to keep playing small. And nobody needs to continue to play small. There's no reason to continue to play small. I want to take a moment again and shout out everybody who was a part of Wellness Weekend. I appreciate each and every last one of y'all. Wellness Weekend is an event that was brought to you all um, from my mind. <laughs> it's from my mind. It's from the mind of true. Um, I was hosted by myself with special guest Wallow267 for our first year. Um, and we had a full lineup. So Wellness Weekend was a full day of events. Excuse me, three full days of events. Day one, we had a taste testing and comedy show. It featured uh artists like L O, excuse me, comedians like LOL Brielle. Well, she's also an artist, so I guess I don't have to excuse me. Um, um, but LOL Brielle hosted for us. We had DJ Just Play in the building. Um, we had Greg Summers and Uncle Lou 216 doing comedy in the building. Straight vibes, straight amazing energy. Like, we loved it. And then people carried on. Like, I was so amazed to see, like, people showed up on day one and on day two and on day three. Like, so there were people who only showed up on, like, whichever day they found most interesting. But then there were people who, like, rocked out the whole damn weekend, which was so fire. You get what I'm saying? And so, like, on day two, we had a full day of workshops. We had Jessica who came in and she did uh, yoga and meditation. 
meditation. We had Kristen Farmer who came in and talked about fund development and how to manifest your money or make it, uh, bringing your money to you, you know, and making your money work for you type of thing. Uh, we had Business Bay, Steve, who came on and like gave extreme game around uh, monetizing from social media and scaling your social media, no matter which platform you were on. Uh, we had Meek University. Oh, excuse me. Meek came on day three. I'm jumping ahead. I'm jumping ahead. I'm jumping ahead. Uh, we also had, who did we have? We had Andrea and Mark Wilson was in the building giving amazing game on real estate. We had Roscoe Noe who came up and talked about financial literacy and cryptocurrency and NFTs. Like uh, we had Elyric who came up and talked about business foundation and how to really use other people's money to get us into different spaces or to scale our businesses. We had Get Fit with Yella, Big Yella, not the little one, had the whole crowd in there, not only working out and moving their body, but they were doing manifestations like they had moments of we had moments of clarity throughout wellness weekend and it was so fire and there were so many other people that were on a panel and you can catch everybody who was on the panel throughout the instant replays the link is actually available below this video in the description um so you can watch the entire wellness weekend we did cut it down to all of the talking points so you're able to go through and see um all of the people who actually spoke even though you weren't in there to like catch the vibes with us but you'll still get all the valuable information which led to day three day three of wellness weekend was straight fire so y'all heard me talking about welcome to wellness weekend like energy so fire still fire to right now obviously i'm still high from wellness weekend right we had wallow 267 and meek university oh tamika Wallace, like they were, they blew me away, y'all. They blew the audience away. Like he called Desi Banks in there. I got to talk to La Russell, which is one of my favorite artists from Vallejo, which is actually where Meek is from. Like it was so fire. There was so much game that was given. So many gems was given. Wallow showed us some receipts. Like he showed Meek and I some receipts. Baby, my life has changed forever from Wellness Weekend. But the most beneficial part to me, honestly, after all of it, is the feedback. To, to, it's been over a week and I'm still receiving phone calls, DMs, text messages, talking about what Wellness Weekend were for them. And that was amazing. Like you do not get any better than that to, to put people into a room and for them to be able to execute an idea, to share ideas. And my goal for Wellness Weekend essentially was for everybody who came in to leave with something that they did not come with. And that's exactly Exactly what happened hands down that's what happened it was phenomenal and I'm so fired up for next year so like if you're watching and you're like well shit I need to be in a room whether you're like vendor sponsor panel if you want to be in a room for wellness weekend 2023 which is going to be way bigger way better everything like make sure that you reach out to me. Um, I'm going to put my email up on the screen right here. You can send me an email, let me know. And then make sure you turn your post notifications on because I'm also going to be dropping information all throughout the year about how you can be a part of Wellness Weekend. We also got some requests to take it on tour. They asked in Houston, they asked in Atlanta, Somebody said Chicago. So drop your city below. Like drop your city where you watching from so we can see if we need to bring a wellness weekend to your city, to your town, to your state. Like we trying to pull up. Like again, thank you to all of our sponsors. Thank you to all of our vendors. Thank you to everybody who came to be a part of Wellness Weekend definitely amazing thank you to all of the information you gave and a lot of the questions that typically are being asked you are going to find in the instant replay of wellness weekend so before we get ready to get out of here y'all i just want to say leave y'all with a message right and that message is to keep going keep going literally it's going to be days that you wake up and you don't have the energy. It's going to be days where you don't have the money and you feel like you don't have the time. 
but you do. You have the money, you have the energy, you have the time, even if you don't physically see it. I need us to get very familiar with speaking life into our situations, into our life, into our environment, and to understand that life does not happen to us. It happens for us. It happens with us. And it's important for us to bask in those moments, bask in the moment of the struggle, bask in the moment of things not working out, bask in the moment of not having the money, bask in the moment of um, not having supporters, bask in the moment of people not understanding your idea, bask in the moment of people not understanding your vision, like bask in the moment, be present with each one of those things. Like go ahead and be present, be present for you. I am challenging you to be present, be present for what it is that you want. And if you don't do anything else, don't give up and remember that everybody just can't go with you. Everybody has their own personal journey. I've taken every single opportunity possible to show the world your business through social media. That is the problem. You gotta get out here and get on a little bit more. It was a flex on your old girlfriends or the girls on the other side that you don't like or the girl that messing with your ex. It was that's all the shit is about. We gotta get up out of that nigga shit. We don't be want to win. We be on too much nigga, local, neighborhood shit. But we talking about we want to go global. No. No, we can't go global playing local. We got local mindsets talking about. And some of our mindsets don't even be local. It be neighborhood shit. One thing we got to understand is black people, everybody can't go.